welcome to this week's news bulletin. Let's take a look at the headlines. France and Germany push for tighter European Union borders following three Islamist attacks in the past month. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is urging Pakistan to assure fundamental rights for all citizens. India and China convene for the first time after a serious border conflict in Ladakh region. After violating Canada's parliamentary rules, former Liberal Member of Parliament is now being accused of mistreating staff. But first, President Donald Trump says the elections are far from being over as he vows to fight the results obtained last week. Good evening. I'd like to provide the American people with an update on our efforts to protect the integrity of our very important 2020 election. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. If you count the votes that came in late, we're looking at them very strongly. But a lot of votes came in late. Trump's campaign indicated that they will explore all possible options to obtain an accurate and honest vote count. There were 682,479 ballots counted in Philadelphia, in Allegheny County, that there were no poll, poll watchers allowed to watch. It's the job of the media to ask the question why, because all we are asking for is truth, transparency, and sunlight here. That is all we are asking for. And sadly, we are asking the questions many of you should. The president's refusal to accept the results means the election disputes could drag on for weeks as states clarify their tallies or push to mid-December, when the 538-member electoral college is set to vote. Baseless claims by the president and his supporters that there has been widespread voter fraud and that the election was somehow rigged or stolen from President Trump. <clears throat> that kind of rhetoric is extremely dangerous, extremely poisonous to our democracy. And now recent developments in Europe. Following the recent Islamic attacks in Paris, Nice and Vienna, French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that Europe's Schengen zone of control-free travel needs stricter controls. The open border of the Schengen zone, which brings 26 countries together, has been under threat due to chaotic migration into the European Union from the Middle East and Africa, especially during the coronavirus pandemic. Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz has called for a coordinated plan for dealing with the foreign militants, while Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root has suggested stopping undesirable foreign financing as another avenue for tracking extremism. Other ideas amongst European Union leaders include imposing stricter demands on online platforms, setting up special European institutes to train Muslim imams, and having the ability to deport people with no claim to asylum in Europe. Now looking at recent events in Britain. During a parliament session this week, Prime Minister Boris Johnson urged Pakistan to guarantee the fundamental rights of its citizens. I, I agree passionately with my honourable friend, and uh, I, can, I can tell him that that is why the Minister for South Asia uh, recently raised this very issue uh, with Pakistan's human rights minister and we urge the government of Pakistan to guarantee the fundamental rights of all its citizens. Prime Minister Boris Johnson was responding to concerns raised by a member of parliament, Imran Ahmed Khan, who requested that the government make it clear to Pakistan that the state-supported persecution must end. We should not ignore humanitarian injustices and the plight of persecuted minorities. On a Remembrance Sunday, 82-year-old Mahbub Ahmed Khan was shot dead, the fourth Ahmadi recently slain in Peshawar. His crime under Pakistani law? To call himself an Ahmadi Muslim, whose creed is love for all, hatred for none. Does my right honourable friend agree with me that hatred preached in Pakistan ends up on the streets of Britain? And it is in the interest of our own security that Her Majesty's Government should make clear to Pakistan that state-supported persecution must end. Ahmed Khan recounted the recent murder of an Ahmadi Muslim in Pakistan and asked the British government to not ignore the plight of persecuted minorities. And now speaking of Pakistan's neighboring countries, the member states of Shanghai Corporation Organization gathered for a virtual summit this week. 
paving a way for Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi to gather for the first time since a violation of line of actual control by Chinese forces in Galwan Valley claimed the lives of 20 Indian soldiers. In his remarks, Prime Minister Modi said that it is important to respect one another's sovereignty and territorial integrity to enhance connectivity. कि एक दूसरे की संप्रभुता और टेरिटोरियल इंटीग्रिटी के सम्मान के मूल सिद्धांतों के साथ आगे बढ़ा जाए। The comments are relevant at a time when China is supporting a 3,000-kilometer-long infrastructure project called the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. The corridor will connect China and Pakistan, but will pass through the Pakistani-occupied Kashmir. India has been protesting this project right from the very beginning. Lastly, coming back to North America, the trouble for former Liberal Member of Parliament Yasmin Ratanzi, who recently resigned from the party after admitting she employed her sister for years on public funds, isn't over. Past employees of the Member of Parliament from Don Valley East said that she created a toxic and verbally abusive environment at her office, yelling at them, insulting their appearance, and publicly ridiculing their work. Multiple sources said that allegedly when residents from South Asian communities called about family reunification and immigration cases, Ratanzi on some occasions told them to stop working on their files, suggested that individuals were untrustworthy because of their ethnicity. That's all for you. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.